So now let's get to the main event. It's phenomenal. Welcome to the 2980 Network, and this is Open Mic Night. Open Mic Night is your source for everything Apple. We talk about all of the latest Apple news, their products, any sort of reviews, and really anything that can relate to our Apple products we like to talk about here. And uh, welcome. If this is your first time watching, welcome to the show. This is a weekly show that we do every Wednesday night live at 7 p.m. Central Time, 8 p.m. Eastern, over on Blab. You can always find the Blab by heading over to 2980network.com slash live. It's posted there. That's probably the easiest way. Or you can follow us on Twitter and find the live links. We would love for you guys to come out live. So there's a lot of you who are listening um, in post to the podcast, and that's fantastic. But if you want to come out and join the chat, we would love to have you out here on Wednesday nights. So everything about the show, subscription links, information, hosts, all of that can be found at 2980network.com. And this show is also a part of the Geeks Network. The Geeks Network is a compilation of a bunch of fantastic tech-related podcasts. So whatever you like, whether it be home servers, Windows, Mac, um, home automation, absolutely anything, head on over to thegeeksnetwork.com to find a bunch of other podcasts. I recently went through there and just made sure I was still subscribed to all of them and uh, kind of got refreshed with those. And because I think they actually added a new show recently, or at least since the last time I checked. So there's just a bunch of great stuff out there, including uh, the show I do on Thursday nights with Mr. Jim Collison, Home Gadget Geeks. You guys can also catch me over on that show. All right. Oh, and, and one final thank you also to WLMNRadio.com. Roger and everyone over there for streaming us live on the radio. That's fantastic. We love that uh, you listeners out there get to hear it over like actual radio. That's really cool. And they also do it online at WLMNRadio.com. So big thank you to them. Colin, I realized last week I was listening back to the show. They never like welcomed you into the show, never introduced you. So uh, most people who have listened before knew who you were, but I will say it. Welcome, Colin. Thank you for coming back for another week. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, it's good <laughs> to have you back. Uh, we made a recent switch. Not that you guys care about this sort of stuff at all, but just so you know, just so you know the tech we're using. It actually relates to a question that we're going to answer uh, for someone later in the show, but we switched over to Evernote for our notes, uh, show notes. So we were using a Google Doc, which was okay, and it worked fine. Uh, but sending that link every week and just getting into the browser, it's blocked for me at work and the app on the phone, I don't really care for too much. So we decided, hey, we'll give Evernote a try. And shared notes on Evernote has been fantastic. We've been using it for maybe like an hour, but it's already been great. There's a chat functionality built in now. I haven't used Evernote in years, neither had Colin. And I thought, hey, what are some apps that do easy sharing and Evernote came to the top of our list. So I grabbed that one and, and man, it's been fantastic. So we'll see how this works using Evernote as our uh, note sharing app. If you guys have any tips on Evernote, I would love them because I kind of want to start using it for ever, other aspects of my life. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see how that all goes. All right. So tonight in the lineup, we have got quite a bit of Apple news, actually. Uh, in the past few episodes, I've kind of joked there's not much to talk about with Apple, but there are actually a few good things going on now. And then at the end of the show, we have a kind of a funny news story and then ending up with a question from Rob. He wants to know what podcasting gear I am using. And it's been a while since I've listed that out for you guys. So I'll just go over quickly all the podcasting gear in case you guys are wondering what I use. And of course, it's all Mac friendly because I am entirely Mac for all my editing and posting of the podcast. So any of the equipment I use, you guys can be guaranteed that's going to work with all of your Mac equipment. All right, so the first news story is actually a news story that I didn't think needed to be talked about, but it's getting a lot of traction. Uh, and it's mainly because I was confused on it. And luckily, Colin is here to, to refresh me on exactly what it is. But by the end of this month, Apple is actually killing off iTunes radio. So when I heard this announcement, I, I remembered iTunes radio coming out. I knew that it had been released and they had talked about it. But ever since then, they have done so much in iTunes and so much for music that in, in the Apple platform in general, that I've just gotten confused about what is iTunes radio and what is not. So just know that at the end of the month, it'll be completely gone. Now, iTunes radio only made it to the United States and Australia. So this doesn't really affect many people anyways. But in general, if you are a uh, iTunes radio user, it's going to be gone. Now, Colin, you filled me in a little bit on exactly what this means. Yeah, so what I what iTunes Radio is or the what yeah, they're closing just generally it down what iTunes Radio is. iTunes Radio was I would say pretty much the first iteration of Apple Music. So 
what you think of with stations, basically what you'd think of with uh, what Pandora. Pandora is probably the closest that it came to where you could go to different things. They had like a guest DJ of the week where it was some it was some artist did like a voiceover really quickly to start the thing. And then they had their playlist of the week. But other than that, they had like an alt station, a pop station, just a bunch of different stations. And then you could also choose an artist and have a playlist curated to that artist. It wouldn't necessarily be all of their songs, but I mean, it would stay within the genre or stay within related artists kind of thing. So like the exact Pandora ripoff. Yes. Apple is, okay. It was, it was Apple's first foray into streaming music. And then okay. when Apple Music came out, the only thing that really got added was the ability to listen to Beats One Radio. Other than that, there's... Right. Well, and so I went into iTunes, and when I went to go look for this for iTunes Radio, I was getting confused because there's also streaming radio stations, uh, meaning actual, you know, and that's been in iTunes for years and years and years, where you can, like, go in and see different, like, streams of, like, oh. a, of an actual terrestrial radio station in iTunes, those are still there. They're hidden. Uh, but it, so it was just interesting to see what exactly is going to go away. And just like you mentioned with Apple uh, beats music. So, so that's staying around and obviously Apple music is not changing just the Pandora functionality. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of take a, a tour around iTunes here, like tomorrow. Uh, I don't know when it goes away. I think it's the 29th. So today is the 27th, two days. Yeah. So tomorrow I'm going to kind of take a tour around and then on uh, maybe on this weekend, I'm going to go look and see, what exactly all went away, but that's been interesting. All right, so moving into the second piece of news, Apple has released the second beta of iOS 9.3. So obviously we are on 9.2 right now. And moving over to iOS 9.3, 9.3 is a kind of a game changer for Apple, not in the sense of all the functionality it adds, but in the sense of this is a rather large update. That's not like you would think a lot of these things they would hold off for iOS 10 or hold off for the next big release. Um, in these dot releases, a lot of times they'll maybe issue one maybe two kind of features, but they're issuing kind of some big features in this. And in the betas, people have already been talking about it. And actually some of them are taking off. Now the first one, which um, again, this was something that I didn't really understand. And, and I think Colin uh, actually likes the idea of this. It's night shift mode for the iPhone. So when you think about at night, uh, your bright screen, and this is going to change the color temperature on your screen at night uh, before you are going to bed. One of the things I didn't really know this was a problem, Colin. I had no idea this was an issue. Yeah. So all devices, whether it be laptop, iPad, Kindle, even I, iPhone, whatever it may be, they release something called blue light, which I'm not a science person. I don't know a whole lot about it. Yeah, neither of us are, but that's okay. We'll do our best. But what blue light is, is it's a specific type of wavelength of light. So you have... The way you have wavelengths of light all the way from infrared to UV light. And what we can see is pretty much in the middle. Blue light falls outside on one of the ends. I can't remember. It might be UV light. Okay. But what it does, it completely messes with your kind of brain chemistry where normally at night you would be falling asleep. The way blue light works, it makes you think it makes your brain not recognize correctly that it's time to go to bed. Okay. Messes so, with that internal clock a yes. lot. Okay. So over time, and I mean over time for 99% of probably the U.S., I wouldn't even, it was it's probably less than that for the world, but for the U.S., a large majority use their phone every night going to bed and all of a sudden, hey, after five years of using <laughs> an iPhone, whatever you may be using, your body is not regulating the same way anymore so the right. night shift is apple both acknowledging the problem and offering the solution for it finally gotcha so so this is a good thing and maybe a trend that we need to see among all yeah. the kind of uh any sort of technology that involves a screen that you're looking at that'd be a great and and that's true you know my wife always you know tells me that i should stop being on my iphone or something like that kind of within the hour before bed because that's why i can't fall asleep it takes me so long to fall asleep i never really thought of it being a light issue i thought it was a more of a keeping your brain active right before you go to bed issue and it might be a little bit of both but the light thing makes a lot of sense so 
And we'll see how uh, effective it is, I guess, when 9.3 hits the masses. So we have a question here from Jim that we'll go ahead and answer. He says, should I upgrade right away? Now, this is always a tough question for me on Apple because I used to say yes, uh, for sure, upgrade right away. Apple usually does a pretty good job with these things and they're quick to correct, but they have had a recent history of major functionality dropping out on some of these updates. There was the one a while back ago where for the whole day until they released a fix, uh, people's phones were, they couldn't make phone calls. I mean, that is the primary function of a phone. It should be able to make phone calls. So I always give it at least 24 hours because within 24 hours, uh, most people, a lot of people will upgrade right away and there will be articles out uh, telling you uh, the major things that have gone wrong with it if they have gone wrong. Now, the last few 9.2, 9.2.1 updates, those have been just fine. No issues there. So I think you should update and um so uh, Michael in the chat room also had a good point. There is some security fixes that are coming along with this 9.3 update that are good to have. So I would say within 24 hours, I would run the update unless you hear about certain things going wrong. Colin, are you someone who upgrades right away or do you usually wait on devices? And does it differ between like your iPhone or your Xbox or your computer? Um, I mean, I usually upgrade or, or update right away, at least for my iPhone. I always forget with my iPad because... I'm on it so infrequently, which I would like to change, but just something that I'm not always using. Computer, I usually don't upgrade until like the second or third one comes out, mainly because I just forget and I get annoyed. When I'm on my computer, I don't want to like open it and be like, oh, I'm going to do something. But first, let me update for 10 minutes. Right. So right. that's probably a bad habit, but. I really like the Xbox, how just the functionality of the Xbox where it does the, when you turn it off, it's not fully off and those upgrades will run in the background yeah. while your Xbox is off, which I think is fantastic, even to the point where I can buy a game. So there was one time where I bought a game when I was out and about, not at home. And by the time I got home, my Xbox wasn't on, like the screen wasn't on, yeah. but that game had already been downloaded and installed, which is pretty cool. I wish more devices kind of updated like the Xbox One does. All right. So Brian says, uh, since when is the primary function phone calls on a phone? It's email and Twitter. You know, I'd probably agree. I'd say my phone usage on the phone is about 1%. If that, I was actually looking at our minutes uh, because I just switched over to Verizon from Sprint. And I just want to know how many minutes I was using. And it's like, really, really low. And I think all of them come from like maybe two conversations I called my mom on because we don't FaceTime. We still use the phone. So yeah, it was, it was interesting, but yeah, you're right, Brian, you bring up a good point. So maybe that might not be a big issue if it breaks the uh, phone functionalities. So, uh, Nikki asks when the upgrade is coming out, we're on beta two. Um, I would say usually there's going to be three or four betas before it. So I would give it a few weeks, if not more than a month, uh, I would say sometime maybe late February, we'll see it. I'm not sure if they've released a date yet. I actually haven't checked. I'm just going on kind of history of how they do their beta releases, but probably I would say uh, late February for a public release of 9.3. All right, so mid-March, speaking of things coming up in the future, there's going to be a mid-March Apple event. And we talked a little bit about this when we talked about the Apple Watch and what we wanted to see in the future and what we wanted to see in, forms, or in terms of form factor and things like that. But in the mid-March Apple event, there's actually more than just the new Apple Watch. So yes, we will see a new Apple Watch. No, we're not going to talk about rumors right now. We've kind of hinted at them a little bit. And I think, especially as far as the Apple Watch goes, the rumor mill is pretty dry. Uh, in terms of Apple has actually kept it pretty tight. You can imagine it's kind of like back when uh, we first had the iPhones. Those first few announcements, Apple was extremely tight-lipped. Their um, supply chain and everything like that was pretty good at keeping everything a secret. And I think they've been that way with the new Apple Watch. So I don't want to speculate any rumors because the ones I've seen, I don't think are very reputable. I don't think they're good. So I'm not going to talk about them on the show. But uh, there are going to be a few more items. The new iPad Air 3 or that line of uh, items, if they don't switch the name, 9.7 inch iPad, we're going to see a new iteration of that. But the more interesting item is it is rumored that they are going to have another four inch iPhone. Now, no one knows what this would be called. If it's a six, you know, C like they did the color line, but imagine the color line from a while ago that we have not seen since then. They have not come out with a six version of the C. So it is rumored that they're going to have another cheap entry level phone. And that's intriguing to me because uh, I didn't expect the C to do well, yet I saw a lot of people snagging up those C's. But the thing with the 
whatever this new one's going to be called. Sorry, I'm messing with my microphone here. If you keep hearing <laughs> like little booms, but uh, the big thing with this new one is that it's going to have the A9 chip, is what I keep seeing. So that's true. So you have a smaller phone with actually a pretty beefy processor in it. Yeah. So I mean, it'll be smaller it'll still be 16 gigs it's still going to start at that lowest one where i guess eight used to be the lowest but 16 is now the standard right so I, to me that would kind of be worth it truthfully if it had the a9 processor i'm it'll have at least from what i've seen out there it would have uh what is it called the not force touch what am i thinking what's the thumbprint oh, 3d touch oh no touch id Sorry. touch id yes so it would have touch id it would pretty much do everything the 5c or the 5s did right for the most part right well, was I, it the 5s I, that had uh the 5s was when it came out the touch id yeah yeah so it would be it would basically just be a better 5s right with a little beefier processor now i think the important part about this is if you have been following any of your big mobile carriers now i can only speak to the united states i don't know much about foreign uh, mobile carriers but the big ones here sprint verizon t-mobile all of them are moving towards paying for your phone per month so kind of these installment things where you can either buy it outright on the first day you know and you are buying the full priced phone whether that be six hundred dollars all the way up to like eight hundred and fifty dollars depending on what phone you're getting you're either paying that day one or you're doing kind of a financing plan with your carrier where it's you know zero percent over two years and they're going to pay it off so it ends up being you know 20 to 30 dollars maybe 35 40 dollars per month to pay for that phone carriers are moving away from subsidized phones so we used to be able to get a brand new phone for 200 dollars. now this c is very interesting because for someone who doesn't have the monthly you know i don't want to pay 30 dollars a month and i don't have 700 dollars lying around what's another option to get into the iphone if this is a way cheaper model then maybe you do have that 200 dollars device where you can go into your store and get an iphone for 200 dollars that day Possibly. I'm not sure on the price point of where these are going to come out, but I think it's kind of a big switch. We've kind of seen these carriers uh, and it's kind of sad to see because for me, it's not that bad, right? I love having at least a two year old phone. So every two years, I, I usually skip a generation then I'll get a new phone. So for me, I'm buying a new phone every two years anyway. Someone who likes to hold on to their technology and someone likes who one phone is good for them for like five, six years, then they're, you know, it's kind of stinks that they're having to pay the full price for that phone. And they used to be able to just pay 200. The caveat of that 200 was that they're being signed up for a new uh, two year agreement, but that was no problem for them because you're going to stick with it. Usually you're not switching carriers. Once you find the carrier that works for you, you're going to stick with them forever. So those two year renewals were no big deal for people. It's like, yeah, it was pretty much like a free phone uh, at $200. So It'll be interesting to see if that is any sort of incentive for Apple to offer this lower end iPhone, or if that's a reason that sales of all it all have dropped. Um, you had a <laughs> you had a pretty good addition to the notes in terms of we talked last week about Apple taking away the 3.5 millimeter jack from the iPhone, and I haven't seen this video, but but what was kind of the take on that? Um, it was, I mean. Um, we aren't promoting this person in any way. It's just someone we've both watched. Um, MKBHD on YouTube. He's big when it comes to tech reviews and just kind of he just everything tech. He's not really one way or the other when it comes to Mac or Android, whatever. So big he got to interview Kobe Bryant. I mean, that's how big. Yeah, he's which <laughs> it's that crazy. was weird. I it really was. That. We're talking about the technology of basketball shoes, which was kind yeah. of interesting, but kind of odd at the same time. But what he was talking about was when it came to the 3.5 millimeter jack was while before everyone before changes happen with Apple, everyone complains. Everyone says, why are you doing this? Why are you taking this away? What the hell? Kind of like we were last week. Like, why would they do this? Like, it makes right. no sense. It's stupid. Yada, yada. But what he was saying was that Apple, the way they look at everything obviously is from a business standpoint like if you take away the three and a half millimeter jack what are you going to have to do if you want to use your headphones that are wired adapter for your phone next adapter for your car next adapter for your iHome just, dongle 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 yes, dongle how many dongles do I need just a constant thing where Apple's like if you don't want to transfer pay x amount of dollars for this and most likely a lot of money yeah and the way he said it he was like apple being apple you want an adapter 50 bucks <laughs> that's that that's totally true 
So, is- yeah. And so what he was saying was while you they may be trying to save on space within the phone, they're also doing something they've done before when they got rid of the 30 pin head for the, between the iPhone 4 and the 5 when they went to Lightning. Mm-hmm. They've done it before when they took away Firewire where everyone was like, why are they doing this? right six months later it was almost as if like what the hell is firewire (laughs) yeah i have no idea what you're talking about and it's just a constant progression where they're going to get rid of it but in some form or fashion over a little bit of time everyone's just going to kind of be like we used to plug the headphone in like using something else other than a lightning cable because that's what he was saying it's like it's probably going to be a lightning connector and like you said last week it'll be hd sound yeah so the the trade-offs suck in a way but the way he was explaining it was apple's doing what they've always done and we're going to do what we've calm always done down everyone just yeah. just calm down <laughs> and but sorry not hd sound just high quality just higher quality than you would get with three and a half millimeter you jack. could if, if if you got digital headphones that would go into yes. the lightning port you could get higher technically you could get higher quality not normally but if you went to the digital route yeah, it, HD sound, you, you would never notice it unless you had the right headphone, right. which unless you're paying 800 to to $1,000 for your headphones, you're never going to have well, the right Well, it would have to be headphones that had their own DAC, their own digital yeah. audio converter in the headphone. So yeah. technically it could happen. Um, but yeah. No, okay. So yeah, so I agree. That that was a perfect... Uh, MKBHD always does a good job of kind of grounding us, I think. He, he's got a very... He's got a good head on his shoulders when it comes yeah. to technology. And he's not your average... Uh, he's not your average. I would fanboy of something. Yes. I think because he uses everything, and everyone sends him things. Right. So yeah. he's very even keel with like, yes, this is a good product. No, this isn't a good product. Even the ones that people are like, this is going to be the best. There are times where he's like, this sucks. <laughs> like, right. Yeah, that's why I like him. All right. So moving on to the next thing, I just had a quick uh, suggestion because of how impressed I have been with it. So I just want to do a quick thing. iPhone cases are always, you know, they're a dime a dozen nowadays, right? You can get a ton of them off Amazon or at your local uh, carrier store. But I found a brand that has been around for a little bit, but I've never actually tried any of them. It's actually the Spigen. Uh, If you can see the brand there, S-P-I-G-E-N. And this is the Tough Armor case. Now, it's a very slim case. This actually is a little, it's, it's pretty cheap. Uh, this part of it is cheap. It's a kickstand, very flimsy plastic. I don't pop it out too much, but the rest of the case is fantastic. Super slim. It's got just enough of a lip on the screen so that if you drop it on the screen, it's not going to crack. And it was very affordable. I want to say like $17, $20, right in that range. So not too bad. Apparently, it's got some sort of you know cushioning around the insides so when you drop it. You know, who knows about that, but I have dropped this thing a ton already. That's, it's only, you know, two weeks old, but I was traveling with it. So it, you know, fell out of a a suitcase on the plane and it's gone through some drops and it's held up fantastic. So I just love it. And it's got the grippiness up top a little bit. So it's a little different material on each side. So you get some, if you have problems with kind of the texture of cases, I think it's been, been pretty good. Colin, do you use a case on your phone or do you go, do you go naked? Um, no, I mean, I use... I don't use the full case. I use Rockform, which you introduced me to. In I college. loved Rockform. Absolutely loved him. I mean, the big thing for me is that it was thirty bucks for like a tough, a good tough case, and then they had the little adapter that you can just like hook it onto your dashboard. Yeah. But the amount of times I have dropped my phone on concrete or something of a hard nature is a lot i was gonna say more or less than you want to admit i thought you were gonna say uh, not too much but it's actually it's a lot (laughs) i mean this is the second case i've had the first one the little tab that kind of locks it together broke so i had to get a new one but i mean between the two this thing's got some good gouges taken out of it but my phone has never cracked it's never splintered i've never had any issue and the nice thing about these is that they're very sturdy So like when you take it apart, if the phone's not in it, like it doesn't have that much give to it, which is a good thing. Right. So and and they've got a bunch of different styles of them, too. I used to love rock form. I can't remember why I switched away one time. I needed a case quickly. And to be fair, though, they are rather expensive, especially. Well, for the six, they went up like. 15 bucks so they're normally i think normally they're like 50 dollars right so they're the a little on the expensive yeah. side 
and all and you, you, you need their custom, like they, their mounts are really good. They're great mounts, but they are custom. So if you lose one of those, if you switch cars or whatever, you're going to need to get a new one of those, which are a little bit more expensive. Well, the nice thing I will say about that, I've looked it up before the mounts, you can purchase the mount like solo. Now you can purchase that by itself, oh, okay. which they didn't used to do. Right. Right. I remember when I first started using them, it was, you bought the case, which came with the shell, a little bumper. And then you would get the mount. You would get the mount. Now you right. can you can buy bumpers by themselves. You can buy the mounts. You can buy the little extra like magnet that you had on your first one. Oh yeah, the one that goes in that little like plastic thing. Yeah, so you could like kind of cool. It makes yeah, sense for idea. people who like use their phones the way they show it, where it's like people in a shop where they just like kind of just dock it on like a tool bench or something. Right, but they've got a bunch of different adapters for like the bike, which I thought yeah. was one that was pretty cool and and ones I would actually trust. So yeah, uh, Spigen and Rockform, both fantastic uh, case brands. I had a case on before that I thought I was going to recommend and I'm really glad I didn't because it started off great and then oh. those cheap cases, sometimes they can just like quickly start to go downhill. Was that and the one that just broke apart the other day? Yeah, that or one. finally just like just frayed. Yeah, and, and Hannah has the same brand, and hers is like discoloring. There is a gold-colored uh, plastic rim around it, and it's turning blue. So apparently the thing was blue and then painted gold because uh, <laughs> it's just like – as and it's not even from like dropping. It's from like rubbing on her clothes uh, as she puts it in her pocket. It's just wearing off, so it's turning blue instead of gold. So, yeah, I'm really glad I didn't suggest any of those cases. All right, so quickly – we're going to do talk about one of our affiliates real quick, and that is FreshBooks. And so uh, my new theory on affiliates is I'm never going to suggest something to you guys that I have not personally used and personally really enjoyed. So we've got a few new affiliates. I'm going to rotate them out uh, weekly. So we're going to have a different one each week. And uh, the first one I want to talk about is FreshBooks. So if you are a small business owner, back when I was doing consulting uh, on the computer side, I loved FreshBooks. You can put in a bunch of different uh, different clients and then you can put in your hours and send them out a bill or an invoice electronically. They can even pay it online or they can mail back in a check, however you want to do it. It was absolutely fantastic, super easy to use. I didn't want to like handle money. I didn't like that. I So in my consulting side, I was like, okay, quickly, how do I just send them off a bill? FreshBooks was fantastic. I did it all from my phone app, but you can do it on the computer too. I mean, it gets really powerful. You can use it for a probably a pretty big company, but if you are a small business owner, if you just have a few clients, if you uh, do some sort of consulting at all and you need to send out bills, I would suggest FreshBooks. So if you want to try them out, you can try them out for free. Head on over to 2980network.com slash uh it's hard to say 20 network.com slash fresh books uh, or you can head over to 2980 network.com go to our affiliates page and you can see all the affiliates there and you can click on fresh books so if you guys want to support the show and try out fresh books you guys can do that so just use that link all righty so uh, heading into more apple news we wanted to talk a little bit about how the q1 went for them it didn't go great right um, at least Not on the American, terrible, but no. it wasn't as fantastic as it could have been. No. So, I mean, the numbers off the top of my head that I saw in a business insider post was like a 1% increase in revenue, which was like, God, this number is insane. But it's 75. What they made was $75.9 billion, which was up from 74.2, which, oh, no. <laughs> in one quarter yeah yeah it's but, it's not terrible numbers and they're not going down but it wasn't the increase they wanted to see no but and then the big problem was that with american sales american sales of the iphone during quarter one were less than forecasted which right said a lot about i think we've even talked about it before where it's i've the iphone is so oversaturated and the fact that they cannibalize their own product it makes it so difficult because while there are the faction of people where it's we're going to buy the new iPhone when the new iPhone comes out, there is the other faction of people where it's like, no, <laughs> like <laughs> I'm going to like you were saying, people are going to keep their iPhone for a number of years or there's people not using iPhone who are like, I'm great with Android. I love what it does. I right. don't need iPhone. So they've they've put themselves between a rock and a hard place, which is understandable. And at this point, if they aren't coming out with a new product every year, they would put themselves in a terrible position. 
but in my well, head i think maybe they should like take a year off in between see I, I don't know if they need to take a year off i don't know if these numbers i think all the analysts focus on like everything needs to be growing isn't there something well, to be yeah. said for the fact that people don't need i mean they still okay let's look at market share on the iphone it's still crazy high right so this yeah. is not like people are not are leaving the ios uh leaving the iphone platform the great thing about this is that apple is making quality products that last we all don't need new iphones right and so yeah maybe the 6s wasn't as impressive as it could have been and maybe the sales were down because of that but what i think it says a little bit more and what a lot of people aren't saying is that these are high quality products they i mean they're great my mom is using a four 4s or four i mean and it still works just fine for her i mean i was it, there's nothing really wrong about it you're using a five or 5s right a five yeah a five i mean that's that's generations ago and it still works just fine so, yeah. so I, I think there's and the nice part about apple the other thing is is that they try to make their latest uh version of ios available to the widest range of old devices so you're on an iphone 5 which there's been you know the 5s the 6 and the 6s since and you're still able to run the latest ios system so yeah. uh, a device that's three to four years old that's still able to run the latest os that's impressive and they do those sort of things so uh, i don't think it's as bad uh, on that statistic as everyone's saying it is but i agree with you everyone's trying to make it sound like it's just a a really bad stat, but I, I don't think it's that bad. I think it's actually a, a decent thing. You're going to see that in Q1. Um, so yeah, not a terrible thing. And I will say to what Brian, right? That's power. Fat. Yep. Okay. Yep. Sorry. Everyone says it, then I'm like, I don't know who that is. I'm just going right. to write. <laughs> yeah. But what you were saying about with the need better, better innovation or features, you're right. Because the only thing that happened yeah. between the six and the success were really I say cosmetic, meaning not so much the look of the phone, but kind of just a few features where it's like, hey, there are live photos. Why? Okay, can I just tell you that's one of the most annoying features of my new phone? Yes, it's so, <laughs> so dumb. So I wasn't planning on upgrading to the 6S at all. It was like, I agreed, Brian was right. There was nothing uh, big. When I made the switch over to Verizon, it was like an extra $4 a month to get to the S over the six. So I'm like, okay, fine. Give me the S. Yeah. I'll pay the extra $4 a month. So I got it. Live photos is like, an, it's annoying. There's no use for it. No. It's so gimmicky. And when I go back to look at my photos, they like move now. And I just, I don't like it. Like I wasn't planning on doing it. I'm just taking a normal photo. So yeah, it's kind of annoying. I've actually turned it off since. And then yeah, the 3d touch, which is, is cool. I can definitely see its use case, but nothing that you need to get a new phone over. It's something that no. whenever you have to upgrade, it'll be nice to have. Definitely not something you need to buy a new phone yeah. over. So yeah, you're right. I mean, the innovation was lacking there. And I'm that's that will play a large part in whether or not people buy the new version going forward. Is is it just going to be a cosmetic change where here's this one new feature? Or is it going to be a wholesale thing where it's there's a new processor in this next phone? There's a new like there's a new memory card or some whatever. <laughs> yeah. There's exactly. A, I mean there's a 40 megapixel digital camera it's like okay cool i'm gonna spend the money on that no it's the same camera it's the same processor it's everything who cares yeah, they, i mean they, they added that you can uh shoot in 4k which i did for a little bit and first of all i don't how much i don't have it? anything i can't view 4k i don't have any 4k monitors i don't have a 4k tv and I, and editing in 4k is an absolute pain and the size like i think it was what you're just about to say the size of the file was absolutely ridiculous so i went back down to 1080p i'm like there's oh, really yeah. no need for it so i felt like yeah you're right the 6s was a little bit of the stereotypical gimmicky stuff right so so hopefully oh, yeah. the 7 is a little bit better uh with that but in the same regard, like I said earlier, I don't think it's a definitely bad thing. I think that they make quality products that last and and you don't need to upgrade. So it's not like there's a bunch of people screaming, hey, this old phone phone is absolutely awful. I need to upgrade. You know, no one's really saying that. They're like, oh, man, the new one wasn't that great. So yeah. they have their issues, uh, but I think they're they're limited. Yeah. All right. So apparently today I didn't notice this. I had no idea. Uh, I was doing my stereotypical Google Apple news before the show to make sure I'm not missing anything absolutely like crazy. Because if I didn't talk about something, that would be kind of crazy. So, uh, but I, I was missing something crazy. Apparently, this morning there was a massive, like the majority of uh, iOS and Mac users were experiencing Safari crashes. So Safari was not working for them when they were going to, I think, search something in the address bar of the Safari application. Colin, were you? Did you experience this? Like, did you notice it happened? No, I mean, to, I don't use Safari. I never okay. use Safari unless I'm on my laptop and. 
in the morning. I never use it. I got to work and saw that pop up in like my email RSS where it was like Apple Safari problem. I didn't right. get into it because I was like, I don't use Safari that often. So <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And I, I hadn't really either. I hadn't looked it up because the only device I use Safari on is my phone. And maybe I just hadn't used Safari this morning, but Apple did issue a fix. So I'm not really sure on the details. I'm sure details on what the exact problem was uh, will come out in the future, but we don't know really right now. But if you did have those issues this morning, they should be fixed. Everything should be good. And if they are not, Apple is suggesting to erase your website data in Safari. So whether you're on iOS or your Mac, you can go into those um, preferences and you can delete out the website data. And apparently that was causing an issue. So that could be something that can help you guys out. All right. So now to get into something a little bit geeky, um, I had a question from one of our listeners. They were using Safari. So the same exact thing talking about Safari and they were trying to view our live show because we've moved over to Blab now and they were not able to view it. And it told them they needed to download Firefox or Chrome. So they were kind of asking me like, Hey, why did this happen? Like, why can't you use Safari with Blab? And it all revolves around WebRTC. So I just kind of want to tell you guys just a little bit about this. WebRTC is kind of a, it's a series of browser APIs, which WebKit that Apple uses does not use. So there's been, they keep talking about how they're going to include it in WebKit for Safari, but they have not yet. Um, so just know that that's kind of what's holding you back on Safari is that uh, Safari does not have uh, WebRTC. Blab runs on WebRTC, so you cannot use it in Safari. And it's kind of a downside. I've found more and more, especially with WebRTC, it's kind of taking off with things like Blab. Now that I'm using Blab at least two times a week, it's a big issue for me. So just recently, I switched and made Chrome my default browser on the Mac. Now, also a hidden little thing is that people were like, oh, no problem on iOS. Like, okay, on, on the computer, I'm fine. I'll use Chrome. iOS, no problem. I'll use Chrome except for on iOS, Chrome is just like a wrapper around Safari. Chrome is technically Safari with like a wrapper on it in iOS because iOS, Apple will not allow different browsers. Uh, you are stuck with Safari. So any app that like pops up a browser, like when you think of Facebook or when you think of Chrome, it's using Safari. So you still cannot do any web ROTC stuff on your iOS device as of yet, but apparently Apple is going to be rolling that into WebKit. Not really sure. I'm not a huge... Um, I'm, I guess I'm not a huge super user and I'm not a, I don't know a lot about how all this is working and the time frame on it. Uh, Jim Carlson just posted a, a good link in the chat, which I will also put in the show notes to WebRTC, webrtc.org, which might have some more information on it. All right. So this next story was, uh, okay, a little astounding, a little frustrating and um, just, just kind of odd. So uh, a little while back, a father was looking, got a credit card bill uh, for an extra $8,000 more than he had planned. And that $8,000 came from his son's uh, microtransactions on FIFA on his Xbox. So, okay, first of all, I didn't even know you could, I knew FIFA had like things you could- the coins. Like Is the, it coins? The FIFA Ultimate Team points. Okay. See, I've never, I've never bought anything in FIFA once I've gotten there. Cause maybe I don't play that game mode, but okay. Aren't those things like $2? Like how many did he need to spend $8,000 on microtransactions in FIFA? Like the cheapest ones. I, I haven't played ultimate team in a really long time. I think the cheapest ones were like eight bucks for like a pack of however so many. We bought a, so we bought a thousand of these things. <laughs> yeah. And he bought a, like a thousand of them at the highest price. So Jeez. I think the highest yeah. price of these things is like 50 bucks. You're basically paying for the game. And, and this is just an overall thing of, I hate, hate microtransactions. This yeah. whole freemium model where the app is free and then you pay for things in the app. In certain very limited circumstances, do I like it? But in the whole gaming sphere, this has become a huge thing. And this is not the first time that we have... Uh, this is not the first time we've seen a child rack up microtransaction. You know, this started with Clash of Clans and with all those games on the iPad where the kid can just click accept. And so Apple finally put some stops in there so that the kids cannot do that on their accounts. Yeah, a, a little bit. Yeah, we all stops, know the, the stops kind of work. <laughs> Right. Very, very limited circumstances. Yeah. But so I just, I, first of all, I just don't like it in the sense of, I would rather pay you $60, which on FIFA you do. So FIFA is weird because you do buy the full game in FIFA. So this is even more of a reason why I don't like microtransactions have made their way into games that I've already paid $60 for. If I get your game for free and you're going to charge me for microtransactions, 
okay, whatever, I got the game for free. But when I'm paying $60 for a game, and then on top of that, needing to buy a bunch of stuff, this all started, I remember, I remember the time I first saw this was in NCAA football on Xbox. You could buy like some recruiting package. Like when you were doing your season, you're able to buy like extra pipeline states. I distinctly remember being like, wait, I, like it, I had a, I had a confusion moment. Like I need to buy something. I already bought the game and I was extremely confused. And ever since then, I've just been extremely against this. What about map packs on like call of duty? See, and, and those are, I, I don't consider those micro transactions though. You're, you're basically paying for half of a game each. That's time. true. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. And I don't mind those actually. Those are okay for me. Cause I think those, okay. So like, the difference is I think of a microtransaction, I get like coins in the game, right? Which okay. I can probably spend in like five minutes and it's getting you into ga- almost like this. And they've done a lot of research on this. They get into oh, psychology yeah. of gambling and they, they study like people who sit at like casinos and just put money into stuff. And that's how they do these games. They get you to a point in the game where oh, I'm so into this. And then they do that. Uh, but on the, on the map packs, yeah, you're right. It's a microtransaction, but it's like, I'm getting a lot of content. Like I'm ev- like, I know it's going to happen four times a year. There's going to be four true. of these. I can plan them out. Uh, I can save up because I know it's going to be like $15, $20 for this pack. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I think it's a little bit different, but you're totally right. It's an in-game transaction. But I was just shocked at this. Uh, the, so the guy did end up getting, Microsoft did refund him because the purchases were made by a miner. So I know at first, when the story first hit, they were not going to refund him. So I'm not sure when the story changed and what all he had to do. I know he appealed uh, to Microsoft saying, hey, like, no, you really need to like, do something about this. So I think it was actually pretty generous of Microsoft. Um, I mean, the kid had a credit card and he had access and you didn't control it. I don't know. It's it's kind of hard. Who who do you blame in this situation? Do you blame the kid? Do you blame the parent? Do you blame Microsoft? You know, I I mean, I say it's mostly on the kid and Microsoft for not. I lost call on there. Oh, Uh, there yep. There we go. We're good. So, I'm, I think it's on Microsoft and the Sun. Microsoft for not having something in place because Apple has gone through this. And after Apple went through it, you would think, hey, other people might think, hey, we should put something in place. Something as easy as every time you try to make a purchase or a microtransaction, you have to know like the what is the security code on the back of the card. Right. You have to know something simple, or you have to ha- know. Which they like, have some of those, but I, I even think it needs always. to be more than that. So, like the way Apple does it is, I would when I and I'm going to do this when I have kids because I think it's the best way to go. When you sign up your family accounts, you can give your kids accounts, but you label them as kids. Every time they try to make a purchase through the App Store, it alerts the uh, parent's phone. So it, no matter where I am, which is kind of nice, it's convenient, alerts me saying, hey, whatever's name is trying to buy this for this much money. And you can approve it or decline it, which I think is kind of, I mean, it's, it's, it's simple. It, it works. Now, they've Microsoft has tried this in the past with, uh, I just went through this issue with my brother-in-law. Right. So when he was young, he got this Xbox. Now he's older and doesn't need all the restrictions. But switching his account from a child account to adult account was an absolute pain. And uh, and actually his it almost was more frustrating to the mom because every time they like needed to renew their gold membership or something, she had to log in. She had to put her information in. So in some instances, I think people will go around it by not creating the kid account. So there's always gonna be people that just don't follow this stuff. But this was it was just a extreme case of eight thousand dollars in one month. Yeah, and I mean that's um that's microscopic in the whole scheme of things of how many people have an Xbox and how many people make purchases. Right. So yeah. truthfully. I mean, the way I was saying that it's on the kid is I'm sure this kid was set up with this Xbox, knew his parents' credit card was on it. What for whatever reason the parent told him the password. And it's like every time he tried to do it, it's like enter your password. Well, I don't think the kid was even that young. Like there is the way you're saying this playing FIFA. It sounds like a 16 year old, whatever word I can think of. Yeah, right. (laughs) Well, like uh, Brian in the chat says affluenza, which is that whole term they coined back on that time when that kid who was really rich didn't know, like, honestly, the uh, consequences of his action. Yeah, And I I put honestly in in air quotes like he didn't because he was sick. He had affluenza. But but yeah, it's kind of a it's a weird issue. I, I definitely put it on the kid, too. I think your kid needs to know that, you know, this costs a lot of money. I want to know how he did in a month. That's what I, that's what, it's <laughs> still, the numbers just shocked me. I almost, I almost didn't believe it. I was like, like on FIFA, month. there's not that much you can well, buy. Can you just imagine FIFA? going through like a thousand confirmation screens of buying something. Like I just think of the time that would take, first of all, the time to just, 
just to buy this stuff, not le- to let alone not even play with it. I mean, if I think back to when I'm a 16 year old and like and just a little bit of a jerk, I can I can imagine doing it. Would I? No, because the fear of God <laughs> would be so close to my brain. Right, right. That at this point. Never mind. I'm not going to say. Well, and and what, what card, what thing was he not getting in the game that after like, after $1,000, he didn't have like, oh man. And then he got to 2000 and then three and oh. then four. Like what, what was he going for? What in the game did he not have that he wanted? Because I know in FIFA, you're not like, you don't have to buy things to keep playing. Like, I think you're using them on like cards, right? Like you get players yeah. in so packs of cards. He was, so he was trying to build he not it have. Too. He was trying right. to build like the craziest team and he apparently wasn't doing it correctly. Well, <laughs> if you have to spend over $8,000 to get the perfect team, I think that's a little crazy. <laughs> I you, don't know. You've what ruined doing. the idea of the game. <laughs> right. And Brian says fear of God of my dad's belt. Yes, exactly. Oh, I'd put so many more, like so many more items on that <laughs> list. <laughs> exactly all the things thrown at us as children oh if he if he had hit me with a car after i did that i wouldn't be mad at it. <laughs> yeah yeah well so the uh, reaction from the dad was that there is no more video game consoles in the house all oh, gone yeah so, i would have gotten that my my dad would have like gotten the bill he's he actually did this one time and it was justified me and my brothers were fighting about n64 being real stuck up brats like <laughs> no it's my turn whatever yada 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 right I said that twice tonight i need to stop walked up took the vga cable took scissors snipped it and said that's it <laughs> ended Jeez, it right up there. At him and yeah if yeah. i was that dad i would have taken if it was an xbox one i would have taken it stared at the kid and thrown it as hard as i could against the ground yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty, pretty much. And he'd be working to pay that off, even if I didn't have to pay it. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. So we are going to finish up this show with a question from Rob. Rob emailed me asking, hey, uh, he's a, he listens to the show and he just want to know what kind of podcasting equipment I use and specifically if it was all good to go with the Mac. So he's in a Mac environment and he wants to start podcasting. And so I just wanted to do a quick rundown with you guys on all of the equipment I'm using. A lot of you guys know about it. And I believe, I don't know if I transferred the gear page over now that I'm thinking about it, but I used to have a gear uh, page on the 2090network.com website. So I'll make sure that's still there if it's not, and I'll put it back up. But uh, the microphone, ATR2100 from Audio-Technica, fantastic microphone simply because they do XLR. I'll kind of move like this. They do XLR right here, and they do USB. So like we're doing right now, I am using the USB to go to Blab, and then I'm going in the mixer and doing a recording with the XLR. So just some fun things you can do with that. And it's extremely reasonable for the sound quality that you get so much so that I was able to buy one for Colin and I got one for Hannah for our other podcast. I mean, these things are like, you can get them down as low as I think like maybe 38, $40. If you get it at the right time, usually they're around 50, $60. Uh, but they're great, great sounding microphones, uh, attached to them are extremely inexpensive, newer brand N E E excuse me, N-E-E-W-E-R. Uh, it's a boom arm. So these things are like $15, super cheap. You can get them in black or white like Colin has. And then attached to that is also the newer brand shock mount. So uh, what are you shaking your head for, Colin? It's something Brian said. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I was like, I'm not lying. That's what I did. That's what they are. So, uh, so yeah, really good boom arms. They're not as long. Uh, I know that, for example, Jim on Thursday nights, if you watch me on that show, his comes like, I think over his screen, even his is extremely long. It's the Heil, uh, more heavy duty, I think around 90 to a hundred dollars. These are awesome though. 15 bucks. They clamp to the side of the desk and they make it super easy, gets it out of the way. So you're supposed to not be able to hit the microphone during the show. Colin seems to not get that, uh, <laughs> concept, but that's what they're supposed to, uh, be for. So, um, those are the arm and the shock mount, uh, webcam is the Logitech C920 standard if you ask any podcaster what webcam they're using usually that's it the nice part about that you can get the lower end logitechs and they work just fine uh but the c920 if you want to do any sort of video recording for like a tutorial or something they do do high definition at 1080p so that's why i got that model a little bit more expensive but you can definitely go down if you're just doing blab blab does not do high definition not even close to high definition you could use a the built-in webcam on your computer and still be just as fine as good so 
And then for the mixer, you guys can't really see it, but it's a Lesis Multi-Mix 8. I chose that originally because it did USB, which means you can run the main mix right into the computer and capture it that way, which worked great for me. I was, uh, it worked okay. The levels were a little bit low, which is what uh, I didn't like about it. So you could start out with that. And then you can upgrade my, uh, I use a Tascam DR40 recorder. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's actually back here on a different stand. So I uh, record into that, which that has been a lifesaver, just a digital recorder. Uh, if you're going to spend any money, it's actually the most expensive piece of podcasting gear I own, uh, but it's been worth the money. So the Tascam DR40. And then let's see, what else? Anything else? Um, okay. And then the Behringer H400A headphone amplifier. So this is, you would only need this if you have multiple hosts in the same location. So when Colin is ever over here or when Hannah and I do our show, this allows more than one person to put headphones in and hear the main mix, which is, you don't realize how beneficial it is until you use it. Like having, I think the first time I put a pair of headphones on Colin and I had one too, just you be able to know how loud you are, know how loud the other person is. It really helps uh, with your sound. So if you have more than one person local, you can use that. And of course, for lighting, I use uh, one of those lights you can just get at like Lowe's, right? They're like, it looks like a like a tin bowl with a light on the back. And so I just have one of those and they're, they plug in, you can mount them on things. They have like a clip. So I mounted it onto a stand and then I actually just put a Wemo light in there so that I can uh, remotely turn it on and off with my phone. So that was just something extra I did. I had an extra bowl bling around. And so I just went ahead and did that. So, um, uh, that's all the podcasting gear I use. And all of that is you can do with the Mac. So right now I'm heading straight in for my microphone. I could also do it from the mixer. Everything just works with the Mac. People have said, and they're still saying, I'm not sure why they're saying this, that the Logitech C920 does not work on the Mac. Now there's no, like there's no installation CD and you can't get the Logitech software, but that doesn't mean it doesn't work. It's still plug and play on the Mac. So you plug it in and you might not get the granularity control that you get from the Logitech software, but you can still use it just as good. And uh, if you want granularity in your control, granular control, granularity, however you say that, uh, if you want granular control, you can get an app called webcam settings from the Mac app store and you can control the zoom, you can control uh, backlighting and all that sort of stuff, which is what I do. So hopefully that helps you out, Rob. I hope you get your podcast up and running. If you do, always just send those over to me. If you guys are fellow podcasters and you listen to this show, uh, always tweet me links to your show because I like listening to fellow uh, fellow listeners, fellow podcasters shows. And I always like seeing what you guys are all talking about. So if you have any shows like that, um, Jim, I know yours. It's okay. It's decent. Your co-host could use some work, but I, I already got the, uh, the link to Jim's show. And uh, luckily I have a pretty good co-host. So much better than your co-host, Jim. Uh, <laughs> it's weird when I refer to myself like in third person. I'm just yep. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll delete that out of the auto recording. I'm not sure. Nope. I'm not sure. <laughs> nope. You're going to keep it in there. Just keep it rolling. Keep going. All righty. So we are going to bring this thing in for a close. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. I'm glad that all you guys came out on Blab. Thank you to the people who stopped by, especially any new listeners. Thank you for coming. I know we had a few new ones. I was trying to keep up on the chat, but it was going uh, pretty quick over there. So thank you to anyone new that stopped by. If you guys want any of the subscription links, just remember 2980network.com. Head over there. You can find all the subscription buttons to iTunes. We are now on SoundCloud. We switched. We're no longer on Spreaker. Uh, we closed down Spreaker and we are doing SoundCloud now because I didn't need live audio. I just didn't use it. So uh, we left Spreaker. We are now, and I chose SoundCloud. I'm doing the free one now just to test it out, see if we get any more numbers. Uh, but mainly people just subscribe to the iTunes or RSS feed version. That's the that's the best way to do it or over on YouTube. So we'll thank again, thegeeksnetwork.com for having us over on their network. Check them out for any tech-related podcasts. Thank you to wlmnradio.com. And of course, for this week's sponsor, which is FreshBooks at 2980network.com slash FreshBooks. You can head over there and check them out. Colin, it's been another uh, good episode. It flew by again. We've been like getting to this hour mark quicker and quicker each week. I'm sure we'll be going longer in the future. Yeah, uh, and we keep, keeps flying by. We keep telling each other it'll be a short episode. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I sent that message to Colin like right before the episode. Like, oh, it might be a little short. We're a little uh, short on news and stuff to talk about today. No, we never are. I, I like have, to ramble. So. I have a lot of feelings and a lot of things to say. So. <laughs> <laughs> if we ever need to go there, Colin is down to just 
take this podcast in a direction it has never gone before. I will make it so dark. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is always an option uh, for Colin and I. So uh, stick around. If you guys are live, stick around for just a few minutes. I don't know if Colin's going to stick around, but I'll stick around for a little bit and, uh, and we'll answer some of your questions. But for the rest of you, uh, we will see you guys next week. But until we do, check on. Thank you.